with the camera. I'd be grateful if you didn't hit it. Um, I wanted to thank all of you that have come out. Um, it's appreciated. We have, in these kind of events, we don't have a lot of time to prepare um, these kind of events. This is a bit of a rushed one. And the reason is because I asked if we can hold this event in a school, and they said, unfortunately you can't, and we couldn't have it at another school, and we were basically let down by the schools who said we can't allow you to come here, for whatever reasons they had other events. But I'm grateful to the Wetch community team for allowing democracy to carry on and work properly, and allowing us to have this event here. We've hired the property for the event and we're grateful to them for setting up everything for us and allowing us to do what we've got to do. So, without uh, too much further, I'd like to introduce to a few people who are part of my team and part of the Workers' Party team in uh, the London and nationally. So, to my left is Nijam, who is my deputy in all I do. I'm the national election coordinator for the party, it's my job, it's what I do, and Nijam is my second in everything I do, and he has been quite instructive in the amount of work we were able to complete over the elections, so I just want to introduce him, he's going to be doing a little speech in a minute for us, and to my right is uh, the Assistant Deputy Secretary for London, uh, Ehsan Ullah. Ehsan has been uh, voted in only a little while ago, and he has helped with every day that I've been out here when I've needed extra bodies, he's been, he's been here. I've got also a couple of my uh, other candidates, uh, so I've got Linda Barnier, who's sitting there, who is the poshest lady from Crawley. Yeah. We, we love her to bits, but she's so lovely. So, and Linda's going to be coming up here and giving us a little breakdown of what's happening in Crawley and her by-election over there. So, to start off with, I'm going to ask Esan Olaf if he can to do a, a quick brief of, um, of where we are as a party in London and how he thinks we're doing, and then we'll go to Najam, and then I shall give a, a quick speech myself. But I know you're all here for one reason and one reason only, to see George Galloway give us a speech, and George has got an important speech to make about where we're going as the party, and I'd invite you all to listen to him because we really are going to have to be the alternative to this Labour Party. This Labour Party has broken everyone's heart within the last five to ten years, and it's just not going in the right direction. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Esan to take over and give us a brief uh, rundown of what he thinks that London and the Workers' Party are able to do, and any other points he'd like to make and about uh, communication. You'd like the volume up. Okay, can the people in the back hear me properly? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Jack? Right, I'll turn the volume up and I'll get S on to shout. We, we probably might, might not need the mic with me. Okay. We won't need a mic with me. <laughs> well, uh, firstly, thank you, Hoss, uh, Brother Hoss, uh, for allowing me to speak uh, to this audience today. Um, as he rightly said, I am serving in the capacity of uh, the Deputy General Secretary for London. Um, a few things that I wish to share, and I shall try to take as much as I possibly can from this abbreviated time. A lot of people have asked this question about the Workers' Party of Britain. Clearly, uh, when I go out there and canvassing, when I was canvassing, uh, during my MP candidacy for Quirin West a few months ago, I would say I'm for the Workers' Party, George Gallows' Party. And that was the first thing that they would resonate and say, oh, George Gallows' Party, and that would open up a, a conversation. But I've seen a, a, an evolution from that notion. People now genuinely are recognizing the need for an alternative party. Because, generally speaking, if you ask your heart, you say to yourself, well, what were the options that were available to us during the general election? You had the Labour Party, you had the Conservative Party, and along came Nigel Farage, who was absolutely backed up by the media, 
Um, even my neighbor's 12-year-old dog would have got more votes if he had had that much support. But that's something else. The fact of the matter is that people are beginning to recognize that there is a void. Nine million people voted for the Labour Party a couple of months ago. And what's happened since those two months, it makes my heart, my stomach wrench. I'm sure I'm speaking for the majority of us. What Keir Starmer has done, I won't call him sir, is uh, a blemish to the barristers. They call him Casey. I don't think he is. He doesn't know a thing about human rights. But the point here, which I'll come back to the Harrow reward, is I'm, it's an absolute pleasure for me to stand behind uh, Brother Horst Shaifu, who I look up as an older brother, because I know that uh, governance starts, yes, from the head downwards, but also, in another way, it starts from the grassroots. So, uh, I would like to request everybody here that's here in flesh, blood and bone, as well as the digital realm, that here is our opportunity to genuinely come out there and give a new party a chance and test them. I know for a fact, I know Brother Hoss personally, there's people that actually come up to him for counsel in a private capacity. And he would be an amazing, amazing candidate uh, when it comes to helping the people of uh, the, uh, the local vicinity. And if there is something that he doesn't have an answer for immediately, he's the kind of person who would go back and get the answer for us. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming here. And I would also thank you to please have a think about this and do your bit, your contribution. You might think it's small for us, it's huge. Um, and let's vote this great man into office. And this is going to be a start of something amazing. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you very much, Esther. I wanted to actually, I've just seen Aaron Maffey here, and Aaron has been talking on behalf of the party on social media for the last two, two months since the election has ended, and he's just shown up here. But I really want you to, I'd like you if you can, just give us two minutes, and I mean only two minutes, not more. And he will come there. Aaron, I need you to basically tell people about Labour and housing and the issues that you've been talking about because they're really important things for people to know. Aaron Maffey was my candidate for Wimbledon and he was ba he's basically someone who had it up against the Liberal Democrats. The biggest, you know, they were on the same, we couldn't really fight them properly. But Aaron is a fantastic candidate, and the messaging you've been giving out of late is so important, and I think everyone in this room needs to hear what you have to say about that subject. It's okay, it's done. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as I said, I, I've stood in Wimbledon, and during that time, um, I got to meet so many different people and uh, see so many things that were happening within the area. And Wimbledon's quite an affluent area, so you wouldn't expect um, to, to hear what was happening. But when you sort of look at it and unpeel it, it's not just in Wimbledon, it's happening everywhere. Now, obviously, nationally, we can all see what Labour's been up to, we can all see what the Lib Dems and Tories have been up to, what they've backed over the last 14 years, all the austerity and all the cuts and the reforms that have literally broken our systems and if you look at the people behind these um, reforms that have actually done this um, to our country they're rewarded they're literally made barons they're put into the house of lords they're, they're treated like royalty uh, the Darcy report this week it was uh, Andrew Lansley he was the one that made reforms that brought our NHS to, in 2010, it was at its peak, the, one of the best healthcare services in the world. 14 years later, it's, they've done a report and it's literally flatlining. Any other country would hold, well, any um, not Western country would help hold these people accountable. They have no accountability here. So what happens? They do it again, and they do it again. 
because they know they can get away with it. And so that's nationally. And if we look locally, they're literally, Lib Dems and Labour, they're taking the housing. When they say, oh, we're building 1.5 million social housing, first of all, they're not. Back in the 40s, they built social housing. They built two million houses and they gave it to the people, council houses, people had rights. People had big houses that were designed for families. Now, they're taking them away. They said, oh, you're getting a nice new flat, don't worry. They move you away into a bed and breakfast for a couple of years, and then they give you a really small flat. Why? Because they double the size, they double the amount of them, and they sell them on for profit. They're literally giving these lands to companies like Clarion, who you hear constantly um, in the news for cheating and breaking rules, and they give it to them. And they're going to do it to all of them, especially in areas like this where property is worth so much. They'll see these estates, they'll go in there and they'll say, oh, it's not fit for purpose anymore. They'll tape it up, they'll knock it down, they'll build double the amount, and the people that have council housing won't get council housing anymore. They get what's called social rent. They don't have the same rights. At the moment in the council house, if you fall on hard times, you can still stay there. Social rent, you've got two months to pay your bills and you're out. If you're out, you intentionally made yourself homeless, so the council will not even help you get anywhere else. You lose all your support that you get. So it's something to keep in mind because this is what they're doing up and down the country. And the more Labour and Lib Dem councillors there are sitting in these seats, the more votes they're going to get to go ahead and do it. And there's only one way to stop that, and that is to vote for people like Hoz that are standing up for the Thank you. Bravo, Alan. Thank you very much, Aaron. And that was an important message that Aaron has been investigating, looking into, and has been reporting to pretty much uh, all the social media platforms 